We're gonna go ahead and let this drain, see if there's any metal, fl metal flakes in it. And we'll be kind of good, kind of not. We'll see what happens. So all the oil is drained out. Let's go ahead and run a magnet through this and see if we get anything, which I don't know if it'd be good or bad. Looks like a little bit of metal up top there, but nothing too bad. Back down here with Snow Badger and we got some things. I see no oil, drain the oil out, check it. There's no metal. So what I think is going on is the block is getting too hot, which in turn is thinning out the oil and then I'm losing oil pressure because at the start, I'm always at 40 to 50 PSI. So what I think is going on is the thermostat down here in the water pump is stuck closed so it warms up to a certain point and it's good but then when it's supposed to open it does not so the engine just keeps climbing and maybe a little bit is getting through to actually kind of do some cooling so i'm going to go ahead replace the thermostat <clears throat> with a 160 degree thermostat and hopefully that will bring the engine temps down which in turn will improve my oil pressure because now the oil will not be getting hot here's the new thermos or the old thermostat you can tell it's pretty rusted and as you see in there so you can focus right there the rubber does not go all the way around so what i think it was doing is since there's no seal and the pressure in the coolant system um once it wasn't able to build up because these little holes right here, it was going around that. So this was never opening and it's all rusted and just not in good condition. But the new one that I have <clears throat> does not have that rubber seal. And up here in the corner, like right down in there, it's just metal on metal. So there's no rubber seal in here to deteriorate to stop it from opening. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one in to make sure it's all going to be good to go. And then the pressure will open that up at 160 because we're good to go. And this one will not because the rubber seal wasn't there. So the coolant was going right past it, which was keeping this closed, which was making Snow Badger run warm. All right, so the new thermostat is in Snow Badger now. And I have oil in it. We want, I went back to the Rotella T6, the 15W40, uh, instead of going back to the Valvoline VR1 because I didn't like it because it was a thicker one. And if you saw how the RPMs were going down, since it was thicker oil, it's known to do that. And I don't want to deal with that. So I went back to a little lighter oil now that hopefully that the Snow Badger won't overheat because of that bad thermostat. But right now I'm going to go ahead and start it up check the oil pressure, and then continue to bleed the coolant system while that's running through until it comes up to temp. So I'm gonna be doing all that stuff right now.
Well, I don't know because that coolant went right up to 221 degrees. Doesn't look like it's moving at all inside the radiator here. So yeah, I don't, I don't know now what's going on and yeah, nothing moved here in the radiator. So we gotta go back to the drawing boards and figure, maybe I got a bad water pump or something. I have no idea, but now I gotta figure it out again. All right, let's try this again. So this time I took the thermostat out just to confirm that the water pump works. So I took that out and so there's no thermostat in it. So the coolant should run smoothly through and also have the one, uh, the steam port off. So if coolant comes through there, I know it's good. I can hook it up really fast and then be good because I want to know if I have a bad water pump now. So now that's what I'm doing is seeing that if the water pump is bad by taking the thermostat out so the water can flow all the way through. Okay, now that the belt is on, now let's try it and see if we have a bad water pump or what's going on with the coolant system. I think the uh, the wide band went out. So let me replace the wide band so then we can get everything to work now. Okay, coolant in there, check. Belt is on and tight, check. New wide band sensor, check. Now let's go ahead and start it to see if we have a bad water pump now. Third time. Okay, so we got other problems. The line filter is red, not green. Um, that means it's not sinking because I bought the Holly system for a 24 tooth reluctor, and this is a Gen 4, so it's a 58 tooth reluctor, and I had to buy that conversion. So there's something going on. Let me take a look of what's going on with that because. Right now, it is not working, so bear it back. Let's try it now. Uh, I'm battling where the ECU or the Holly Terminator is doing, it's, it's having light six and seven on, and six is red, and then seven is flashing. It has to do something with like the crank sensor and stuff. Um, I disconnect the battery, turned everything off. Now let's see if we can get this to work again just fine. Please. Just work.
something's not right. I don't. Something's not right. Let me change out the wide band again. Okay, so we discovered another problem. My cam sensor is no longer good. So let me go get a cam sensor and then we'll go ahead and put that in and then start it up. It makes sense why it would sometimes work and then slowly now it's not working at all. So I'll go ahead and get a cam sensor, put that in here and hopefully that should fix a problem for that. But when it was idling a little bit, the water pump does work because I, I don't think the temp went above 150. So that's good, but I still need to wash the oil pump. But I couldn't do that because it wasn't running right. So we're going to go ahead and get a new uh, cam sensor because the line and filter is flashing green. I looked it up and that says a bad sink on the cam sensor. So let me go ahead and I'll get one of those and I'll put those in. So yeah, the cam sensor has a bunch of metal and stuff on it. That's not good at all. Holy shit. All right, so as you saw, I have those metal flakes that are on the cam sensor. So I cleaned the cam sensor. Also, I do have a new one, but what Brandon thinks, the reason why there's um, metal on the cam sensor because maybe there's something going on with the oil pump that it's not seated right and there's metal flakes on it because it's weird that there's obviously metal on the cam sensor. So I'm going to start up Snow Badger, make sure everything is going to be good to go. I'm checking the coolant, checking the oil pressure, and making sure it still stays good. I'm going to let it run up to temp and let it idle and see what happens to the um, oil pressure after now that it's running. I also have the thermostat out of this as well. So I really want to see how this is going to run and everything's going to be going and make sure everything's going to be good to go. So that's what I'm doing now. So let's go ahead and test that out. There's something else going on I need let me look all right so the old cam filter I thought I could clean off and put it on not working at all so I put the new one in here and then now let's see if that fixes the problem
looking good. Oil pressure's good. Coolant's good. The charging's good. Well, maybe not. Still gonna get a new alternator. I'm gonna buy it from Brandon, but the Target Air uh, AFR with what we really have is good. It's going down a little bit, but I need to still monitor that. So let's keep it going. I pulled the new sensor out and it's pretty clean I'll clean it off but yeah it's nowhere near as bad as the last one was just got off the phone with Brandon not looking good we can't really figure out what's going on we think it's a spun bearing or we think maybe the DOD down there so on that plate DOD was a displacement on demand which a lot of these trucks had it. So if you're cruising around, it would cut cylinders off. And then when you got back into it, it turned those cylinders back on and it would help with uh, fuel economy. So underneath that plate that's right there, there's little O-rings that go over each one of the DOD holes. And we think maybe it's pushing through one of those O-rings and messing up. Or what we really think is going on is maybe i have a spun bearing in here so what i'm going to do now is in the next video we're going to i'm going to take all this out i'm going to take the engine out take it over the brandon's and when i'm going on work he's going to look over it and see what's going on and then we'll put it back in so thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel because we're going to take this out and we're going to break this engine down and see what happens i'll catch you on the next one peace